I slowly opened my eyes. I freaking knew it, dude! Frick! It sent us juices. Dude, why do you say it that way? We are the committee of 300. Yo, huh? For real? How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time, we got locked in a room with Senna in the Nozomi Corporation. Um, she was able to give delusions to people so they think that they were supposed to be there, but she told us that we need to make sure that we're seen, so that way, you know, I don't know, I forgot what she said the reason behind that was, but it, it had to do with uh, them actually being able to infiltrate successfully. Um... But then we got to the room that was in the vision that we had had in a previous episode, I believe. And uh, and that was the room where we had been seeing, you know, in other play, uh, other routes, where uh, Norose was meeting with the uh, head honchos of the government and the uh, Cosmic Church of the Divine Light. And so once we got into that room, uh, because... Takami was stupid and listened to the delusion that he had in his head instead of listening to Senna, who's been the most rational out of, like, literally any other character for the most part. Um, got the two, they, they got the two of themselves because of his antics, stuck in this room, trapped, and now they are under uh, a psychological attack where their emotions are getting stirred up for each other and they're also getting really hot and... Uh, you know where this is going. It's it's going to be bad. I can't avoid it. It's unavoidable. I already saw it before I, it even happened. I freaking I freaking Doctor Strange like clairvoyance to that crap like way into the future. I already saw it and it was inevitable. There was no other route. There was no other reality I could have taken. No other world line. This was the one we had to take. So, uh, yeah. I guess we'll see what happens. Oh boy, what could it possibly be? I wonder where this is gonna go. But anyway. <laughs> Without further ado, let's just get back into this, shall we? How long had I been out? My consciousness drifted in and out of a deep slumber. I felt a ticklish, slightly annoying tingle on the tip of my nose, and upon noticing that faint, ever so slightly warm sensation, I slowly opened my eyes. I freaking... Knew it, dude! Frick! Gosh dang it! Ah! Okay. Alright, let's just- I gotta get through this. I gotta get through this. Uh, uh. Senna's face was only a few inches from mine. Her long hair draped over my cheeks. Her faint breaths blew right against my nose. Her eyes were closed but her eyelashes were quivering. She must have only lost consciousness. W we were really, really close. If I wanted to, I could have easily moved in and kissed her. I frantically tried to skirt away, but my body wouldn't move. That was when I finally realized what exactly had happened. Oh, frick! Oh, the seal did the ceiling collapse on them? Oh, that's a little bit crazier than just what I was thinking this was. Okay. But also really like right in the beginning, huh? Like right in the beginning of this episode, I have to be subjected to this. Are you for real? Uh, okay. Keeping my head completely still, I tried to survey my surroundings. But it was pitch black. I couldn't make out anything. It felt like a thin film had been draped over my field of vision. But there was no film. It was just a cloud of dust. We had been buried in rubble. So it wasn't that I couldn't see anything around me. It was that there weren't any gaps in the rubble at all. No matter what direction I looked, I couldn't find a single opening. Oh, frick. Oh, frick! We had been lodged into an extremely cramped pocket of space beneath the rubble. Whenever I tried to force my hands or legs to move, I would hear the sound of pebbles crumbling to the ground. 
That sound made me realize I couldn't move or do anything at all. Cold sweat beaded on my forehead. Had there been an earthquake or something? Shibuya had been experiencing a lot of those recently, but... Maybe they had all been foreshocks. If so, this could have been the biggest earthquake to hit Tokyo since the Great Kanto Earthquake. Did that mean that the Nozomi building had collapsed? The terrorist attack that had happened in America several years back came to mind, bringing an intense wave of hopelessness with it. Oh, 9-11, well, okay, yeah, he's bringing that up, interesting. The fact that we hadn't been injured yet, despite being stuck in a crevice, was probably nothing more than an insane stroke of luck. Or a, maybe a delusion. Oh, wait, no, they couldn't make delusions, though. Yeah, that was another thing. They couldn't make delusions to get out of the room, so... Um, yeah, how did they survive? Yet being the key word. The rubble was just barely holding itself together, maintaining an extremely delicate balance. I had no way of making sure, but it was definitely possible that dozens of tons of debris were piled on top of us. If I made a single wrong move, that balance would be lost. And then, that massive pile of rubble would crush us in less than a second. Imagining that, as my last moment, I instantly froze in fear. I didn't want to die. I couldn't handle the idea of being crushed to death in a place like this, where nobody would ever know. Hurry up and rescue me! A rescue squad! The self-defense force! I don't care who! Just get me out of here! Okay, alright, okay. I tried straining my ears to see if I could hear any people around, but there was nothing but silence. A deafening, eerie silence. All I could hear was the sound of Senna's breathing. Dang it! Sleep like a freaking baby, why don't you? Senna was lying sprawled on top of me, our bodies tightly pressed against each other, perfectly complementing one another. Her chest, her stomach, her legs... Nearly her entire body was right on top of me. She was heavy, and being forced to feel the softness of her arms and how slender her legs were, I... Oh, frick. Naturally, I could still feel Senna's breath heating my cheek, and within it, I could smell something sweet. Perhaps because of the crunchy kuns she was always eating. Her breaths were deep and steady. They followed a distinct rhythm. And each time she breathed, I could feel her breasts faintly moving up and down directly against my body. Dude, freaking Okay. <sighs> no, dude! I was, I was okay as long as you were keeping it serious. I, as soon as I hear the music, dude, as soon as I hear it, I'm like, Frick, you're gonna freaking be freaking gross. Dude, come on. This is not playful time, bro. What the frick? W w was this some kind of torture? An attack of this magnitude would cause all sense of reason within me to crumble in five minutes tops. I needed to wake her up somehow in order to avert this crisis. Wait. I'd have to wake her up? Would it be right for me to do that? I mean, if I woke her up, and she saw the state we were in, how would she react? She was the same girl who regularly scowled at everyone and everything. So, even though it was an accident far beyond my control, there was no doubt in my mind that she'd label me a pervert anyway. Considering she wouldn't be thinking clearly, there was the very real possibility that she might rip out my throat. And at this distance, taking Senna's position into account, not only could she easily do that, but I would be completely defenseless against it too. Well, that was probably a bit too extreme to be realistic. 
but if Senna really were to wake up in a panic, she could very well end up causing the rubble to collapse on top of us. And that'd be the end of it. <laughs> what the heck was I supposed to do? If I could have ripped out my hair, I would have. <laughs> uh, huh? But since I obviously couldn't do that, I resorted to banging the back of my head against the rubble. <laughs> Through that, I was able to suppress my instinctual lust for Senna. Don't pay this wench any heed. I'm not, and never will be into 3D girls. The girls I love are all 2D. Seiratan, appear before me. Drive these worldly desires from my mind. I'm not into stuck-up witches like her. So I won't give in to my lust. I mustn't give in to my lust. I mustn't give in to my lust. I mustn't give in to my lust! <laughs> I can't control it anymore. <laughs> she is unconscious, isn't she? Surely no one will mind if I make ample use of her while she is- Bro! You better freaking stop! Bro, I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna freaking kill you, dude. How about I taste those arrogant lips of hers? The same ones that do nothing but spew self-righteous bullcrap. No. I shouldn't go straight for the lips. I'm not mentally prepared for that quite yet. In that case, how about I aim for her cheek? <laughs> What does the skin of a 3D girl taste like, I wonder? Does it taste like sweat? Or does it perhaps taste sweet? Is she gonna wake up? <laughs> uh. Startled, I cut off the delusion inside my head. Good. Senna's voice leaked out of her mouth, mixing in with her breath. It was quiet as a whisper. Her voice was so soft and frail, I would have never imagined it could come from someone who was normally so fierce and unapproachable. Her eyes were still closed. It didn't seem like she'd woken up yet. She'd been talking in her sleep. I instantly felt a pain of relief. Realizing she hadn't read my impure, perverted thoughts. From behind her closed eyelids, a tiny drop fell. Aww. And with a barely audible plop, it landed on my cheek. It was so very warm. And yet, after only a fleeting moment, it went cold. Even Senna cried sometimes, I suppose. Now, even I was starting to feel sad. Had something happened between her and her father? Oh, right, yeah, because we, we never, uh... She didn't get to get to the, uh, subway, right? Because that's where she, we, we find out about all that, so... Yeah, I guess he wouldn't know in this route. <laughs> hey... A little worried, I timidly called out to her. <sighs> With a twitch, Senna's body started to stir. Her eyes gently opened. Huh? <sighs> at point-blank range, our eyes met. The drowsy Senna stared at me. Her eyes were still sleepy. She didn't seem to be fully awake yet. Don't look. It's embarrassing. It didn't take long for Senna's face to instantly turn beet red. Her eyes shot open and her gaze raced from side to side. <laughs> what? What's going on here? D don't move! We'll be crushed by the rubble! <laughs> rubble? I explained to Senna how we had been buried alive by the earthquake. Right. There were these violent tremors. Then, 
a large monitor fell from above, and... You saved me, didn't you? Oh yeah, that did happen, didn't it? <laughs> Though, I don't have a single clue as to how. Well, thanks. And I'm the one who was supposed to protect you. I never would have thought that I'd be the one getting saved. I thought you'd be a lot more helpless. But it turns out that even you can step up and be a man when you have to. <laughs> Th thank you. <laughs> I would have never thought I'd get complimented like that in a million years. It must have been the first time in my entire life that I'd gotten a compliment from a 3D girl. Granted, Seraton told me that I was totally amazing all the time, but still. <laughs> Unfortunately, our situation doesn't look great, huh? Y yeah we're pressed right up against each other. I idiot that's not what I meant. I'm talking about how we've been buried alive. S -s 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 sorry <laughs> Well, being pressed up against each other like this isn't great either. J try doing something with your gigalomaniac powers. You should be able to, right? That might be difficult, but I'll do what I can. Nishijo, look into my eyes. Wh what Why? We have to establish mutual recognition between us. Did she just ask me to look into her eyes? Being squished together like this was already embarrassing enough, but doing that would completely smash my sense of reason I had left. I'd go feral! <laughs> Stop wasting time. I know you heard me. Look into my eyes. Urged on by Senna's voice, I reluctantly obeyed. I gazed into her eyes. Then, those eyes turned directly toward me. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. This was really embarrassing. I'd never made eye contact with a girl for such a long time before. I never even looked people in the eye while talking to them in the first place, so... I wasn't even close to comfortable with this. Making eye contact essentially meant that you were the only thing the person was looking at. Right now, I was reflected in Senna's eyes. Meaning I was the only thing she was looking at. I was monopolizing Senna's field of vision, and we were so close. Upon realizing that, I couldn't help but think that this embarrassing act was just as erotic as any H scene ever was. <sighs> Curse my adoge brain. <laughs> Crap. I needed to stop these idiotic delusions. We were making eye contact. What if Senna were to see through me? You wouldn't normally be able to read someone's thoughts just by looking into their eyes, but Kozupi could, and Senna was a gigalomaniac as well. I couldn't do this. Making eye contact with a girl was impossible. Stop looking away, Nishicho. Despite her saying that, Senna's gaze wasn't pointed in the right direction either. <laughs> Uh, 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 I, uh, I can't do this. <laughs> what the frick? Yo, huh? <laughs> what the frick is this? What the frick? Uh, oh. A actually, um. I can't do this either. But being this close is embarrassing. Seeing Senna stained beet red breathed some life back into me, actually. Where had all this moe come from? Hmm. 
was this girl not actually 3D? A girl this cute couldn't be 3D! Senna. You're so cute, Senna. <gasps> what the frick? <sighs> it's hot in here. Senna's forehead, face, and even the nape of her neck were drenched in sweat. With how close we were, I could even smell it. There was no wind or anything, either. The rubble burying us had no openings. Was there even a way for air to pass through at all? If not, then we were going to run out of oxygen pretty soon. Upon thinking that, I realized that Senna's breathing had become really heavy. The rhythmic movement of her small chest on top of me had gotten much faster than before. Uh, um, are you suffocating? Shut up! It's just hot. Dang it! What was I supposed to take from that? Whatever, just use your gigalomaniac powers already! Shouldn't you be able to make all this debris disappear like magic? Nishijo, can't you do something? I can't concentrate like this. The heck are you on about? Don't tell me you're going to start relying on me now! How exactly do you expect me to do anything about this? Materializing a flower bed beneath Ayase and saving you earlier were both just coincidences. It's not like I did any of it on purpose, let alone consciously. Don't rely on me. I'm supposed to rely on you, Senna. <sighs> also, please stop breathing all this warm air on me. It's actual torture. A drop of Senna's sweat fell into my mouth. It was salty. Ew, dude! Uh, oh, gosh dang it. I was on the verge of tears. My sense of reason was this close to flying out the freaking window. It was in my mouth. I was holding it in my mouth. Senna's... Juices. Dude, why do you say it that way? Bro! It's a... It's a... It's, oh my gosh. Ah! Ah! Honestly, this one so far, up until this moment, has been not quite so bad. It's been, like, tame. But frick, bro. Gosh, you just can't help yourself, can you, writers? Huh? Nishijo. Senna's face was still beat red, but she seemed to be a lot more angry than she was before. I'll frickin' kill you. Huh? What? All I did was taste your sweat! You can't kill me for that! Besides, it's your fault for letting it drop in my mouth! Taking advantage of this. How dare... Huh? Stop! In the middle of speaking, Senna buried her face in my chest, unable to bear the embarrassment. There was no way she had done it intentionally. But for me, that was the strongest blow out of anything so far. <laughs> so cute! Her breathing. It was passing through the gapes of my clothes. And directly onto my skin! <laughs> Crap! Quickly realizing what she'd done, Senna pulled her head back. Aww. Couldn't it have lasted just a little while longer? <laughs> S Stop it! W what? What the heck are you thinking about? Dude, she's like almost verbatim right now to how freaking like, uh, uh, Kuditz was freaking in Steins Gate, dude, or, or will be, I guess, because this game came first, but it's like the same, she acts like the exact same way almost. It's like, interesting. She was obviously shaken. Maybe she was just 
used to being the tough person in the room, so someone else taking control really left her flustered. Cut off. <sighs> Your delusions right now, Nishijo. Your, um, uh, crotch. Your crotch. Oh my gosh, dude, no, I don't want to read this. I don't want to read this. I don't want to. I don't want to read this. I'm not reading that. I can't read that. That's I can't read that. I'm not reading that. I'm not reading that. I'm sorry. I'm not reading that. I'm not. What? Uh, yeah. I did feel something there. Senna's soft, pillowy thighs. I said to stop the freaking delusions! <laughs> Suddenly, I found my face on the receiving end of a brutal headbutt. And since it was a surprise attack, and a mighty strong one at that, the single strike knocked me out like a light. <laughs> Serves you freaking right, dude. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, I was not gonna read that. I'm not even sorry. I'm not, I've just, I'm not reading that. <laughs> I have no intention of returning to the Cosmic Church of the Divine Light. That is truly most regrettable. I very much valued your skills as a scientist. I believe took advantage of is a more apt description. I will believe in your words no longer. I'm fully aware that your role as Founder is nothing more than another farce. Did you not wish for the Divine Light's salvation as well? I did wish for that once. But not anymore. Then what exactly is it that you desire? Atonement through death. Once one has come into contact with the Divine Light, they can no longer part from it. Even if you plan to distance yourself, the Divine Light will not abandon even the most estranged soul. That's like once saved, always saved Christianity, what the heck? My reliance on a god has come to an end. As someone who has created something on the level of such a being, I have no right to cling to such beliefs. No, dude. Come to Jesus, bro. Nishijo! Wake up, Nishijo! I could hear an extremely pompous conversation between two unfamiliar men. Senna's hushed shouts jutted in between the two voices, causing me to open my eyes. Huh? What, what is happening? Unsurprisingly, we were still squished together, enclosed in rubble with no way to escape. You chose this future of your own volition, leaving the responsibility all upon you. That burden is too much for one man to bear, wouldn't you say? If the salvation of the Divine Light were to be bestowed upon you, you would be provided moderate relief. Indeed, this is the future I chose. Under the Divine Light's guidance, or rather, your guidance, Kuromochi Yudai. Someone's here. You can hear them, can't you? I nodded in response. I could hear the voices of two men. Seemed like some cosmic church of the Divine Light randos. At the very least, it definitely wasn't a rescue party. Uh-oh. It's him. And he's close. I could vividly hear the sound of Senna gritting her teeth. Save your embellishments, Kuromochi Yudai. I refuse to fall victim to your silver tongue anymore. That is most regrettable. However, despite your absence, Noah too has already been completed. All that remains is to transmit our will throughout the world. Not our, but yours and Inohana Kozo's, correct? Indeed. Now that the third melt experiment has proven a success, Project Noah has now completed its trial phase. A third man joined the conversation, 
What the heck were they talking about? And where was it coming from? The fact that we could hear their voices meant that they had to be at least somewhat close to us. Maybe there wasn't as much rubble on top of us as we might have thought. <sighs> Senna shifted slightly. Her hand gripped my uniform tightly. So tightly, it was like she was enduring an intense pain. Her gaze pointed downward, but she didn't make eye contact with me. From this day forth, the ones who shall control the world will fall from three hundred to two. Today marks the dawn of a new world order. Dude, that's too real, bro. Holy frick. My field of vision was suddenly overwhelmed with light. The small pieces of rubble surrounding us began to crumble. Senna raised her head in shock. A hand reached toward us from above, peeking through the gap in the rubble. Are you all right, Senna? Y you That hand began to pull Senna up through the debris. As it did, the crevice beneath the rubble widened, and once her weight was lifted off of me, I could finally move again. Huh? I crawled out of the gap that had been made by Senna's body. It was the room in the Nozomi building. The very same room we had been trapped in. So I'm guessing this is Senna's dad, right? That's the way I've been playing it anyway. Senna's dad and the two other founder guys or whatever that were talking to us through the, the screen, maybe? Hmm. To think that you, just like Norose, would refuse our generous offer. Do you truly wish to live as livestock rather than on the ruling side? Almost all of the monitors that had been hanging from the ceiling had crashed to the floor, leaving all of their screens broken. Naturally, nothing was displayed on them anymore. Yo, did they kill Norose, bro? Even the walls and various other chunks of the room were beginning to collapse. But all in all, the room wasn't anywhere near as bad as I expected it to be. I'd assumed we had been buried alive, but there wasn't even that much rubble. In hindsight, I could have probably escaped if I had tried to. I felt like such an idiot for being too scared to move. Yup, I knew it. I freaking knew it. Yup, okay. <laughs> Senna. Senna was facing a man I had never seen before. He was wearing a ragged coat that complemented his cloudy eyes. Overall, he looked like your typical homeless man. I had the feeling I had met him somewhere before, but I couldn't remember where. Maybe we had passed each other in Shibuya at some point. Yep, you sure did. Aside from the two of them, there was no one else there. Oh, so the other guys are on the monitor then. The voices of the people who had trapped us, the member of the House of Representatives and the Cosmic Church's founder, must have come from a speaker somewhere in the room. Oh my. I see you have finally managed to reunite with your daughter, Hatano. How very touching. Daughter? That man was Senna's father? I definitely heard Senna say the name Hatano before. Please do enjoy your touching reunion to the fullest. When you are satisfied, please, take your seat and enjoy the upheaval of the world as we know it. Once we fully activate Noah 2, it will be possible for us to exert its influence over not only the people of Shibuya, but all humans who reside in this world. The network has already been fully constructed. Suddenly, the voice from the speaker was cut short. And then, a series of strange sounds came through them, which meant their power hadn't been cut off. Something was wrong. Huh? Ah! Uh, j just now! Were those... Gunshots. After the gunshots, came the raspy sounds of a man breathing raggedly. I impossible! This can't... B. 
I was to be the ruler of. A final deathly scream. Then, with a dull click, the audio was cut short once more, and the speaker fell silent. An oppressive silence covered the room. What had just happened? W were they killed? Killed? By whom? Uh, I don't know. The two voices were being broadcast from somewhere else, and the audio was coming out of the speakers. So how close were they to the room we were in? At the very least, they had to be somewhere in the building. Oh, true! So they weren't hearing it through the speakers. They literally heard gunshots, like, somewhere around them. Got you. Taking that into consideration, the culprit who killed those two had to be close by. L let's get out of here. There could be a crazed murderer on the loose. And just who exactly is this crazed murderer? Why were those two killed? No, hold on. How do you know they were killed? Do you have proof? Calm yourself, Senna. I'm not talking to you. Y you heard that scream, right? Th they had to have been killed. Who'd killed them? Shogun? But wait, wasn't Shogun supposed to be a member of Nozomi? No, 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 it, that was just an assumption on my part. There was no evidence proving that he had anything to do with them. Running away might prove slightly difficult. This building is on the verge of collapse. There are cracks appearing everywhere, and the walls are starting to warp inward. Immediately after I entered the room, the entrance was sealed off by rubble. It was just as Hatano said. But I had this nagging feeling. One that told me that, considering the way the walls and everything around us had collapsed, there was way more debris than there should have been. I had a bad feeling about this. Well, it wasn't like I'd ever been to an abandoned building before, so... I couldn't exactly judge the relationship between the way the room collapsed and the amount of rubble produced. The only thing I knew for sure was that we'd managed to escape being buried alive, but the fact that we were still locked in hadn't changed. We could destroy it with my D-sword. It finally occurred to me that the bizarre resonant sound from earlier had finally stopped. Maybe the earthquake had destroyed the device that had been the source. I think it was called... A porter? If that was true, then Senna might be able to get us out of here. I breathed a sigh of relief, then waited to hear Senna's brilliant plan of escape. However, she didn't take out her D-sword. She simply continued to glare at Hatano-san. What were you talking about with those two? We were unable to come to a mutual understanding. A tale as old as time wouldn't you say? You couldn't come to a mutual understanding? Is that really true? Are you not still in contact with them? Where the heck have you been? And what the heck have you been doing for the past six months? What the heck made you decide to appear now of all times? Have you been watching us from somewhere inside the building? For the past six months, I've been roaming around Shibuya, longing for death. I had no intention of returning to the Cosmic Church of the Divine Light, nor Nozomi technology. Sena gave a light click of her tongue and turned toward me. What leads you to believe those two were killed? Uh, um, it, it's... Uh, you know. Those men have many enemies. Hatano stepped in. Anyone could have killed them, in truth. Like I said before, 
I'm not talking to you. But, but, but there was a, a, a scream, and we heard a bunch of gunshots. Are you sure that's what happened? What if it was just an act? Were we even hearing their voices in real time? Wh what was she talking about? In spite of Japan's very extensive earthquake precautions, the head office of one of the biggest megacorporations in the country has taken this much damage. Needless to say, there must have been an incredibly large earthquake. So... Why were those two yammering on and on about classified information to us through a speaker? And why now? Senna painstakingly enunciated her each and every word, as if to make sure I knew exactly what I was claiming. Classified information? What, like, like Noah too and the Third Melt? Not that I knew anything about them either way. It all felt pretty performative. Maybe they needed us to hear what they were saying. Why else would they leak classified information to us? Were those two actually there when they spoke to us? Or could they have died before the earthquake even occurred? Nishijo, ever since we infiltrated the building, we have yet to run into those two even a single time, correct? But... they were talking on the monitor. On the monitor, yes. In reality, we never actually met them. They could easily be fake. True. And of course, everything with the speakers goes without saying. Something is wrong here. Very, very wrong. And I... Hatano, staring at me with wide eyes, interrupted Senna. Oh my gosh, that's new! Holy crap! Ooh, I don't really like that. It's kind of scary. Ew, ew! Stop, it's something about his eyes freaking me out. Nishijo Takamikun, is that really you? I see. You are. Don't move! Senna, in response to being ignored, called out to Hatano-san in a sharp voice. I'll ask again. Why are you here? I came to save you two. No. It might be more accurate to say, I came here to be killed. Oh, don't worry. I'll kill you very soon. But before that, answer my questions. How did you know that we were here? I felt the strong call of a mind. How could you, a man who isn't even a gigalomaniac, be able to feel that? And even then, only a fraction of gigalomaniacs can detect vague, undefined delusions such as that. Maybe because, uh, maybe he was activated as a gigalomaniac after he freaking did what he did to his wife or whatever, maybe. Maybe? Maybe this is his, like, traumatic experience or whatever, you know, the fact that he just keeps wanting to die. I mean, that's what Takami went through before he had a, a, had his awakening moment, right? So, you know, maybe he actually is a gigalomaniac. Someone like Kozapi, for example. Come to think of it. I wonder how she's doing. Was she caught up in the earthquake? I hope she's safe. Did you really feel something? Or did you know that we'd been lured here the whole time? Well? Calm yourself, Senna. Hatred is overtaking your heart. Calm myself? As if I could calm down when the person I've been hunting down for so long is standing right before my very eyes. You mustn't overthink things. Reality is not as complex as a conspiracy theory. 
It is far simpler. You showing up here and now. It's way too convenient. You planned this from the very beginning, didn't you? Us being lured into this room and confined. The earthquake. You showing up here. Those performative speeches ripped straight out of some conspiracy theory. And that inexplicable interruption. We don't even have proof that this room is in the Nozomi building at all. What if we were carried out of the building while unconscious and brought somewhere else? You could have just replicated the interior of the room in Nozomi. The earthquake didn't actually occur, and the rubble scattered everywhere was artificially arranged. The more words sent it throughout, the more unsure I became on what to believe. It felt like the very foundation of knowledge I had always relied on was collapsing. Like it was being pulled apart piece by piece. Jumping at shadows like this will be your downfall. Hold yourself together, Senna. Don't you dare call me that! I don't plan on having a nice conversation with you, so answer the freaking questions! The earthquake did occur. That truth is absolute. All buildings in Shibuya are on the verge of collapse, and the casualties must be in the thousands. Do you have a way to prove that? Go on. Try destroying that wall. With your D-sword, of course. <laughs> Senna threw out her right hand as if she was shaking something off. Oh! The fact that we can use that, though, is interesting. So it's like either the earthquake destroyed the, the porter thing like he's talking about, or we really did get moved somewhere else because she can use that now, and so we're not under the mental attack anymore, or something. I don't know. Doesn't really make sense. Her D-sword materialized in an instant. Uh huh? Senna swung it down toward the wall without hesitation. The D-sword smoothly cleaved through the wall like a hot knife through butter. Hey! The wall broke down. Immediately after, a fierce, chilly wind blew through the room. The scenery from behind the destroyed wall was laid bare before us. And what we saw there was... Oh, frick. Yup, we are in the building. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Shibuya transformed into literal ruins of death. Just a few hours ago, it had been crowded with people. Flashy videos were playing at an insane volume from various jumbotrons, and it was overflowing with glittering decorations. Things all befitting of the city of youth. But now... Almost all of the iconic buildings had collapsed, and those that had survived were either leaning at a sharp incline, or had violent cracks gradually eroding away at them. Not a single car remained on the road. The asphalt had caved in at multiple points, and had risen up at many others. Pitch black smoke billowed from numerous locations and disappeared into the blackened sky. That was the Shibuya we saw from atop the skyscraper. Senna had only been jumping at shadows, and I was no better. There was no mistaking it. We were still on the 31st floor of the Nozomi building, and an earthquake had occurred. There was no telling when the building we were in would collapse. If the building were to fall, I'd have no chance of surviving. It would end with me being crushed under endless tons of rubble. I could be buried for all eternity, with my body never being found. I needed to get out as fast as humanly possible. Trembling violently, I surveyed the room. Huh? My eyes instinctively honed in on an object, a monitor that had fallen on the floor. It doesn't make sense that a mere earthquake caused this much damage. 
Was it Noah too? Yes. It was the third melt. The final trial run of Noah 2. Half of the LCD screen was broken, so nothing was displayed on it. However, the remaining half was tenaciously stained lit. I didn't think it'd been on when I'd looked earlier, but I wasn't completely sure. The third melt. Does that have anything to do with you? I already told you. I have been running away from Nozomi for no less than six months now. Not just Nozomi. You... You ran away from me, Mom, and my little sister! Yes, I admit it. Only half listening to Senna and Hatano-san's strained arguing, I crouched down in front of the monitor. There were letters on it. Text was being displayed. Hmm? Whose eyes are those eyes? Huh? Huh? Is that Shogun? Takami, are you seeing this? Yes or no? What the? A chat room? They'd said my name. Why? Why had they said my name? What did they mean, are you seeing this? The whole thing creeped me out. Who'd written it? Their handles seemed to be corrupted. How did they know my name? How did they know I was in this building, let alone this very room? Maybe it was Grimm? I'd never asked him before, but what if he was actually some crazy super hacker all along? Oh, that's right, because we didn't uh, get to Hazaki yet, did we? Interesting. Or maybe it was Shogun like usual? Was he reading my mind again? Prepping to give me my next quest? No, that can't be right. Or maybe it's the real Shogun. Okay, yeah, because the other one was Sua, so... It's either the real Shogun or... or I don't know, because usually if, if, if he brings it up, if the protagonist brings it up, it usually means that's not what it is, so... The sight of Nanami covered in blood resurfaced in my mind. Right. Nanami was being imprisoned somewhere. If this was in any way related to Nanami, she could be killed if I didn't respond to this message. I crouched down to the keyboard that had fallen down near the monitor, then let out a single groan. I had no idea whether or not the keyboard was actually connected to the monitor. All I could do was pray it would work. And so, I pressed the end key. That's more than the end key, but okay. <laughs> My input was reflected on the monitor. Seemed like I could use the keyboard to type in chat after all, under the temporary handle guest. I replied with N, i.e. no, since their message hadn't clarified what I was supposed to be seeing. What was I supposed to be seeing? Since I didn't know that yet, I couldn't answer why, i.e. yes, until I knew more. Nanami's life could be at stake, so I had to be even more careful than usual. Well, he's probably talking about, do you see the message? You responded to our query, so I believe it's safe to assume you are seeing this. Yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, obviously. Another message arrived. I am grateful we were able to establish contact with you. We are the committee of 300. Yo, huh? For real? Is it real though? Yo, what? Okay. What the frick? What? Wait, so it wasn't Shogun? It was the committee of 300? I'd heard that name over and over today. Those old guys that had supposedly been killed earlier, Kuramochi and Inohana, had both said they were a part of the Committee of 300. What are you doing, Nishijo? Senna peeked over my shoulder at the monitor. What is that? Uh, I don't know. It called me... by name. All three of you are Nishijo Takami, Aoi Senna, and Hatano Issei. 
Huh. Alarmed, both my gaze and Senna's snapped to the ceiling. Were they watching us with security cameras? There were several things in the room that looked like cameras, but all of them had been destroyed by the earthquake, and therefore weren't working. The other monitors were completely silent, too. Who the heck are you? We're the Committee of 300, as our introduction already proved. Interesting, so they, they could hear them. Bullcrap! Can you prove that you're the Committee of 300? Nishijo, type that in. No, you don't need to. You just said it out loud. Huh? huh? Uh, okay. Before I could even start typing, another message appeared. You needn't type. You are being monitored in real time. However, not by traditional means. There are no surveillance cameras present in that room. The devices of your world are unnecessary. At least to us. Wait, why? Are they like some divine council or something? What the frick? Like actually like spiritual beings type of crap? Is that what we're... Huh? To put it simply, understand that we possess the viewpoint of God. Seeing all from a higher order layer of being. That is absolutely what it sounds like. Because the Bible in the beginning, like in the first chapters of Genesis... Um, like in, in, in somewhere within them, like I think it's somewhere between like five and ten. It talks about God. Well, actually, I think it even mentions that he he takes up the divine council when talking about making man. So, but they use the word divine council. So, is that like what it's supposed to be kind of talking about? They already have Christian imagery throughout this. Is the committee of three hundred supposed to be like a divine council? Is this supposed to be like angels or demons or something? What the frick? There is no possible way for you to verify this system nor even the concept. In a similar manner, we regrettably have no means by which to validate us as the Committee of 300 either. You simply will have to go by our word. What the heck? Is this an attack from Noah too? Or could it be a delusionary attack from a gigalomaniac? Nishijo. Is it possible this person's Shogun? There was no way I could figure that out without little we'd been given. I shook my head from side to side. To her, it probably looked like I was about to cry. Senna responded with an irritated click of her tongue. Could they be the crazed murderer from earlier? The one that killed Kuromochi and Inohana? Doubt it. The most likely case is that they're actually Kuromochi and Inohana themselves. They did say they were part of the committee, after all. Senna proceeded to point the tip of her D-sword at Hatano-san. She one-handed the gigantic, viciously sharp sword with incredible ease. Or, maybe you're the one behind everything. I have no motive that would lead me to orchestrate this. Squatting down to look at the monitor was tiring out my legs, and reading the text in the dark was equally taxing. To combat this, I shoved some debris off of the table and placed the monitor on top of it. It could be a few of the members of the Committee of 300, aside from Kuromochi and Inohana. There are 300 of them, after all. If they are who you say they are, that is. Only in TV and movies do you see the masterminds reveal themselves like this. Whether or not they are really the committee should not be what we are focusing on. The more pressing matter is whether or not this self-proclaimed member of the Committee of 300 is the one who killed Kuromochi and Inohana. Indeed, we disposed of Inohana and Kuromochi. <laughs> They're actually the culprit? So those two really were killed? They sought to betray us, you see. Of course, we have long been aware of this breach of faith. They were not disposed of because they were considered a threat. For the odds of their plan bearing fruit were null. It is simply necessary to eliminate programs that contain errors. 
This was merely some debugging, essentially. Wait, programs? What? Are we in the Matrix, huh? I guess that makes sense, because that's what Senna talked about way in the beginning when we first met her, right? Is that, because she said, you know, are you sure that everything you're seeing is actually real, right? So, yeah, this is very Matrix suddenly. Interesting. So there is internal conflict among the committee members, you say. They may be contacting us from the same room Kuramochi and Inohana were monitoring us from. B but if that's true, wh why don't they just use the speakers? I assume they don't want us to hear their voice. They don't want us to learn their true identity. D does that mean... It's someone we know? The man writing this is being extremely cautious. Although I suppose we cannot assume their sex. Alright, well, what if they're Inohana and Kuramochi, and everything that happened earlier was just an act? Are you suggesting that those two had a falling out? It's possible. But it's also possible that they're both alive and are both deceiving us. If that is the case, do you have a hypothesis that answers why they would do such a thing? <laughs> we would prefer it if you didn't misunderstand. Neither Kuramochi nor Inohana were members of the Committee of 300. They were merely under the impression that they were. And it was us who implanted this idea within them. What the frick? They proved convenient pawns in our guise. The same can be said for all those involved in the Committee of 300 Conspiracy Theory. Us true members have yet to take the stage. Even if we were to consider doing so, that much is not possible. For we do not exist in your world. What the frick, bro? What is happening right now? This is super interesting. If what you are saying is true, then what exactly are you? Are you implying that you're God? It may be in our best interest to not argue with these people. Their intentions remain unclear as of now. We are only able to see their words, so it would be a simple task for them to weave in as much fake information as they please. The advice was solid, but the text on the monitor kept appearing rapidly. I couldn't get a read on the guys behind the symbols, uh, all that handle. They knew a terrifying amount of information about us. Calling us God would be appropriate. We are the 300, each of us with our own assigned districts. We are those who administer your world. Our administration aims to erase errors and establish order. So, so th that means... Right as I finished reading everything they had written up until that last point, an idea suddenly popped into my head. It was something I had thought about many times before. You're the g game masters Game masters? What's that supposed to mean? It, in ESO... They're the people working for the d developers o or in layman's terms, they're the people behind us who control everything we do. I have no idea what the heck you're talking about. Rubbing her temples, a sour look crossed her face. Kids these days. <laughs> Nishijo Takami's explanation is accurate. We are the Game Masters who administer the progression of this MMORPG. You are all players. Or perhaps NPCs. W wait are you serious Holy crap! It's happening! It's finally happening! The theory I'd had delusions upon delusions about had been true all along. There was a person outside my reality controlling me. Just like how I controlled Neidhart. Someone was controlling me in the same way. If you're real, 
than to tell this to the person controlling me. R remake my character right now, darn it! A and don't be so crap at controlling me this time. I shouted at the monitor. I felt Senna's puzzled gaze land on my back. The reason we have established contact with you is because we have a request. If you agree to cooperate, we have prepared a cheat code as compensation. What the frick is happening right now? What is this? What is this? What does this mean? Yo? Huh? A cheat code? Oh, holy crap! <laughs> Uh, okay, so a ch cheat is like an exploit. In ESO, if you input the right code, you can boost a level 1 character all the way to level 50 in an instant. A and, uh, you can give yourself a super rare item with a, a 0 0.025 drop rate with no actual effort. Maybe, if I had a cheat code... I, I could stop being such a weak otaku freak. I might even become a real hero. I I'll be able to talk to 3D girls without being creepy. This was the exact epic plot moment I'd been hoping for. Becoming the strongest and most popular character without any actual effort. I'd be totally OP. Holy crap. This is actually happening. The Committee of 300 are actually freaking gods! But like, actually! This is so freaking awesome, Sauce! Holy crap! <laughs> dude, he's losing it. Dude, he's freaking- he's getting swayed by freaking greed, dude. Oh no! Oh, bro. Do you really think that cheat codes actually exist? Apparently this person we're talking to is acting from a higher order layer of being. But why would a godlike being use the same language and terminology that we do? I mean, it's possible you could say it's like, because they're trying to, in layman's terms, speak to us, right? So, I mean. This has to be a trap. Unfortunately, your conjecture proves incorrect. I assure you, our usage of familiar terms to you is fully intentional. The words we frequently make use of do not exist in your world. Cut the sophistry! Your belief or lack thereof lies with you. Choose not to believe us, and we will resort to entertaining other methods. I, I believe you. I wanted to believe them. I didn't want to continue living in fear any longer. If I was able to get a power even stronger than Shogun's, I'd be able to live in peace. We are grateful for your cooperation, Nishijo Takami. We would like you to eliminate an error for us. What you three know as Noah 2. It has the capability to severely disrupt the balance of the game. And in the worst case scenario, it may cause crashes, or even wipe the game data entirely. So, okay though, but like, if they are like the game masters, as they're saying, right? The programmers, you could say, can't you just delete Noah 2? Why do you need us to do it, right? See, when you're speaking from like a God perspective, right? Which I can tell that's what they're probably about ready to talk about. If you're speaking from like God's perspective, right? He often uses human beings to do his will, and the, the insinuation through scripture, when you read it in context and you see different stories and how they play out, for instance, Job is like one of the, the biggest examples of this. Um, it, it shows you that there are things that are bigger than us as human beings. We like to think that we're the biggest thing since sliced bread, while ironically also calling ourselves nothing, which is very interesting. But, you know, ultimately we do have this kind of a large amount of narcissism that we think that, like, in other words, if things aren't going right for us, then God must not care about us. But that's not necessarily true because God often needs us to act in order to affect things in our world, right? So he can't just always just make things happen because, one, it could go against our free will. But secondly, there seems to be a game in play between him and Satan, him and the demons, okay, 
that it's like there are principles put in place that not even he can go against. So it doesn't mean that he, it doesn't mean he's not sovereign. It means that he's like retracting some of his sovereignty in order to play this game, to prove this point almost, you know, to prove to Satan. Like, for instance, with Job, Satan's like, I can get Job to curse you to your face. And God was like, all right, well, go ahead and test him in the way that you want to. And I'll show you that you're wrong. That's kind of the subtext of what's happening there. But in order for that to happen, Job had to go through a ton of suffering that seems very, very unfair. But in the process of going through that suffering, okay, he actually did have self-righteousness weeded out of his heart. Because at one point, while he's talking with God and, and basically saying, I wish I was never born if all this calamity was going to befall me that Satan did to him that he didn't understand was happening. You know, he, he thought God was just allowing, you know, this for no reason. Like, he didn't understand what was going on, right? Um, he he claims that God never gave him a trial. He's like, you never gave me a trial. If you would have put me on trial, then I could have proved my innocence to you. And that's when God, you know, shortly later comes down and basically says, you know, okay, you answer my questions now. You keep questioning me of why I didn't give you trials and all this stuff. How about you gird yourself and answer me? Where were you when I put the stars in the sky? Surely you know, because you seem to know everything. Where were you when I made the donkey bay or made the ostrich make her roost and all this type of stuff, right? In other words, trying to show Job, you think you understand everything about everything, but you don't. You have a finite, small little fragment of understanding of how the entire universe and everything involved with it works, right? So, so it seems like they're kind of pulling from that concept of the fact that God, for instance, needs us to tell other people about him, right? To share the gospel in terms of like Christian terminology, right? To tell other people about him so that they, you know, might repent and turn away from things that are going to kill them, right? And turn to God who just wants to show them love and help them through this life and the next, right? To, to reconnect us so that we don't have to die for all of eternity. It's like, it seems like they're borrowing that concept of God utilizes us and they just don't really, it's like, we just don't really know why he, he utilizes us. We just know that there's a bigger game in play here. And uh, I hesitate to say it this way, but we're basically like pawns in this game of whatever's happening here. That, that makes it sound very like rudimentary or, or really uh, shallow. I guess to say it that way, but if it, it it might it might make it sound better if I said we're not just mere pawns, we are like kings and queens because God says that we're sons and daughters of him, right? And so he's the king. So the 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 the, the sons and daughters of kings are princes and princesses. So, you know, using chess terms, it's more like we're a bunch of kings and, and queens on this board game that we don't get to see the full picture of, but but God is seen and probably Satan is seen too. For whatever reason, we just don't get to see the full picture. So sometimes things seemingly happen for no reason or, or you know, unfairly or unjustly when maybe there's other things behind the scenes that we don't get to understand. Maybe it's because of something that we needed to do. We needed to act upon something because God couldn't impede upon our free will. So it's like, if you don't do it, I can't, I can't intervene here. You have to do something here, right? You have to follow my will. You have to do the things that I tell you to in the Bible and all this stuff, right? So it seems like that's what they're going off of, which is really interesting to me, right? So I'm curious to see what they're going to answer for this next question here. So let's, let's get back into that. If you truly are God, as you say, why is this not something within your own power? At the present time, Noah too has effectively forced our world into autistic mode. In other words, it accepts only minimal interference from us. The Game Masters cannot directly intervene in the game. In the end, we are nothing more than your administrators. In order to eliminate errors, we require your cooperation. See, they are doing that! They what did I just talk about, right? We cannot directly intervene in the game, right? I think that same type of thing happens between like God and Satan. It's like, they can only intervene when you cooperate, right? So we require your cooperation, right? It's the same type of principle I just laid out. That is so crazy if they didn't come up with that on their own. Like if, or excuse me, if they came up with that on their own, instead of like getting inspiration from biblical sources for that, that is straight up like divine intervention. Because that is like, that's such a crazy, 
it's like you don't I don't feel like you don't just come up with that like on your own you know what I mean I don't know dude that's kind of that's that's interesting that's really interesting yeah <sighs> this is giving me a headache all of this reeks of bullcrap if you really can't directly intervene then how exactly did you dispose of Kuramochi and Inohana through people probably right like Sua or whatever we have other cooperators. You may think of them all as debuggers. However, none of them hold the power necessary to destroy Noah 2. For this, we require the cooperation of Gigalomaniacs. Yep, see? Told you. This isn't cooperation. You intend to use us. Call it whatever you wish. We will not deny it. However, we are confident our interests align here. That's... true. Very clever. From this conversation, you could reasonably infer that the Committee of 300 does exist, or that it does not exist. It is also possible that this is an attack from Noah too. But, but isn't it to true that Kuramochi and Inohana were going to betray the Committee of 300? Th they said it th themselves! Yeah, but that could have just been a delusion, right? What if the delusionary attack had already started by then? I stand by what I said before. We don't have a single shred of evidence that the Inohana and Kuramochi talking through the monitor and speaker were actually real. S Senna. You've been suspicious of everything since we got here. In a situation like this, the only thing you can trust is yourself. The entire world is an electronic device, and by simply manipulating electrical signals, you can easily fabricate what we perceive. Which makes sense that you can't trust yourself, right? Isn't that what you said before, you can't trust what you're seeing? Right? So, like, that makes no sense. That view of the ruined Shibuya we can see from here. The rubble filling this room. The messages from the people claiming to be the Committee of 300. The person I'm talking to right now. You. Nishijo. And... Sena shot a glance at Hatono-san. Even he could be a fake. Senna. If your mind is but an electronic device, and your feelings electronical s nope. If your mind is but an electronic device, and your feelings electrical signals, then the hated If, the, if your mind is but an electronic device, and your feelings electrical signals, then the hatred you feel toward your father must also be programmed in. This applies to human death as well. Therefore, you have no need to feel any more of this sadness you feel over the cruel deaths of your mother and younger sister. Do you deny this? Interesting, yo. Yeah, because that means none of it's real. The emotions aren't real. None of that's real. Holy crap. <laughs> Senna gritted her teeth. Her expression grew angrier and angrier. This is a delusion. This is an attack on my mind. I won't be deceived. Well then, here is our proposition. If you succeed in destroying Noah too, we shall revive your mother and younger sister. Wh what? Senna, do not be seduced by their words. You were the one who said these messages could be a mental attack. But, but, with a cheat code, it m might be possible. I mean. They're God, so... Interesting, so she's got like a... So it's almost like Senna's become the protagonist suddenly because now she's got 
She's got uh, Nishi Joe as the devil on her shoulder and her dad as the angel. It's kind of interesting. All things that make up this world are electronic devices. You said so yourself, Aoi Sena. If you were to examine electronic devices at a more conceptual level, you would find that they are composed merely of digital data. Concepts such as life and death are just more fabrications. Bringing a person back from death exactly as they were, with all their memories intact, would present no trouble at all. For us game masters, that is. Can you really do that? Don't allow your judgment to become further clouded. Uh. They're only telling you what you want to hear. Reviving the dead is not possible in reality. Shut up! Shut the heck up! They're exploiting the weakness in your heart. Our opposition is extremely clever. They are not God, nor anything of the sort. I have now fully concluded this. They are nothing more than a mere swindler. A god's existence must be self-contained. It should have no knowledge of the concepts of life and death, and it should not have the capacity to understand them. Wait, what? Must be so- no, that doesn't make any sense. What? No, because a god creates everything, so it should have- it should have all knowledge of all concepts of everything if it's actually god, right? With the capacity to literally understand all of the intricacies of all of them. That's like saying that's like saying a toy maker creates a toy and has no idea how the toy works. That doesn't make any sense. So, I don't know what he's getting at. <laughs> uh-huh. I told you to shut the heck up! I didn't ask for a freaking sermon! Senna's D-sword once again found itself pointed at Hatano. You have no right to say anything at all! If only you hadn't killed Mom! I fully intend to atone for that. It makes no difference if you kill me. In truth, I'd rather you did. So please, do not be seduced by the falsehood of being able to bring her back. You running away is the real thing I can't forgive. Oh, for Pete's sake. Now wasn't the time for some father-daughter screaming match. Maybe I should just leave these two behind. Then I could go and take the cheat code for myself. Isn't that interesting? It's almost like they're trying to cause dissension between all three of us. That's what it feels like. That's really freaking weird. I've made up my mind. I won't kill you. I'll destroy Noah too. Bring back mom. And then I'll never let you see her again. You'll regret what you did for the rest of your freaking life. You truly are a pure soul, Senna. Driven by your emotions, you continue to wish for this world of electronic devices. You are contradicting yourself. Forgive me. It's my fault you ended up like this. Don't try and act like a father now. After all this time, even if you keep up this charade, I refuse to accept you. Hey! You jerks watching us! Senna looked toward the ceiling and shouted out. Tell me how to get this cheat code! Hatano-san said nothing more. All he did was stand there with a sad look on his face. His shoulders sagged. It seems you've finally come to your senses. The cheat code has already been sent to your world. However, that being said, our abilities to interfere freely has been inhibited. We were not able to place it where you are now. We must ask you to retrieve it for us. It is located underground, in Shibuya Station. You will find it in a coin locker near the ticket gate of the Fukutoshin Line. It has been placed in locker Number 1009. Dude, this is Senna. I'm not, I'm sorry, this is Sua. There ain't no way this isn't Sua. 
He wants us to go to Shibuya Station so he can kill us. That's what he wants. He's trying to kill us. It was it was Suo that killed them, wasn't it? With the gunshots. Makes perfect sense. I was just trying to see if there was any evidence for it or not. Has got to be him because he wants he wants her to go to the same place he kills them in every other freaking route for the most part. So, huh? huh. How do we open it? Aoi Senna, you possess an IC card for public transportation, yes? The coin locker is the type which uses an IC card to lock, authenticate, and give permission. The required data has already been sent to Aoi Senna's card. W wow. So this is how God operates. Very prepared. So, see, so you can tell, too, this is where the lies are coming through because they only can do so much, right? They can only kind of, like, you know, put things in certain places where you're not at so it forces you to move and go to where he wants you to go, right? This is what Senna's trying to get him to do. Interesting. It, excuse me. What f form does the cheat code take? That is something not even we know. Whatever item present in your world that it has taken the form of is unimportant. Regardless of its form, once you obtain the code, the moment you fulfill the condition, the cheat code will activate. To fulfill the condition, you need simply to destroy the item it has taken the form of. The target, Noah 2, is located directly above the coin locker. It can be found in the planetarium near the east entrance of Shibuya Station. Upon obtaining the cheat code, you must destroy the planetarium. And with that, everything will fall into place. We pray for your success. Pray to who? Who do you pray to? What the frick? You shouldn't be praying to nobody. That should be a dead giveaway right there. Right? That's probably Sua being like, we pray like that was that was a Freudian slip is what it feels like. But also he says, uh, you'll have to destroy the item. What? How much you want to bet it's not on me? How much you want to bet the item that he has to destroy to get the cheat code is not on me? How much you want to bet? Dude, watch me be right. The monitor immediately went black. With only a dull click, the committee was gone. Even though we hadn't touched a thing. I was overflowing with excitement. I met God. The person controlling me. The world turned out to be structured in a multi-layered fashion, and I was able to talk to someone on a higher layer. I could get a real-life cheat code. I could say farewell to my crappy life forever. I'd become invincible. Nobody, and I mean nobody, would be able to scare me anymore. Shogun, Yuwa, and Nozomi technology would no longer be my enemies. I'd won. I'd won at life. <laughs> I wanted to head for Shibuya Station immediately. I wanted to get my hands on that cheat code as soon as possible. But despite that, Senna continued to waste time. She kept her sword pointed directly at Hatano-san. Her head hung low. S Senna, aren't you coming? Senna, hearing my call, let out a small sigh, then lowered her sword. Without so much as a glance at Hatano-san, she walked straight past me, and then she casually swung her D-sword. Huh? And with that, the rubble blocking our path was cleanly dispersed. Oh, okay. Let's go. She spoke in a subdued voice one that was far removed from the rage she had been showing only a moment prior. <laughs>